Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of John's Rock and Vinyl 77. Um, I'm back from vacation, um, I'm sunburnt, um, you know, I'm having a good time, you know, I'm just chilling and listening to some music uh, later uh, in the evening, and I thought I'd uh, go ahead and show some of uh, the stuff I picked up recently. The past, this is going to be stuff I've picked up the past month. Um, nothing super, like, rare or... There's some rarer stuff, but not anything that's like that I usually show like the psych stuff. So um, if you guys are interested in a new psych video, I'm gonna make one very soon. I just I'm just waiting for uh, some more stuff to come in. Um, I usually want to have you know at least a handful of stuff to show, so so I can. Um, so anyway, um, in the background right now, uh, we're listening to a really uh, interesting album to me by a group called uh, Limousine. This is, uh, as far as I know, the only album they actually made, and it's on Pi Records. It's very interesting. Um, I would I would give it kind of a glam rock kind of style. Like it's kind of like in the vein of like. Uh, I want to say a Mott the Hoople, maybe even early David Bowie stuff going on here. Uh, you can definitely pick up in the in the way of the uh, the vocals, definitely a little David Bowie, a little uh, Ian Hunter. Um, very cool, uh, very cool kind of AOR. Um, very interesting stuff, and uh, I recommend uh, you guys check this out. Even though it's not, I would I would wouldn't. Uh, try to spend more than, you know, three or four dollars on this album. It's not, you know, super valuable. But anyway, uh, definitely check this out. Um, the track I'm listening to right now is America, and uh, we just had America's birthday the other day, so, uh, so uh, Independence Day. So, um, hope you guys had a good Independence Day. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, anyway, it comes with an insert as well, uh, this, this is, uh, the lyrics to the, uh, songs, and it's on Pi Records, which I don't have any other, uh, albums on Pi, so, I thought that was, uh, cool to pick up. And up next, this is a band that needs no introduction, and I feel like this band needs a bad rap for, uh, for being, you know, kind of a sterile pop band in the 80s, but, uh, and basically abandoning all uh, rock roots, but uh, this album is definitely an album that uh, has some rock songs on it. Sticks is uh, Paradise Theater, and uh, just a great kind of concept album. Um, very interesting uh, stuff going on here. If you're not familiar with this album, check it out. I do lean more towards their earlier stuff just because it's heavier, but um, if you're new to Sticks. Uh, this album's not bad to, you know, to start off, I mean, especially if you're into the pop stuff. This is uh, definitely a more pop-oriented album. Uh, I recommend checking it out. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows Sticks, though, so there's really no uh, need introdu introduction. Um, and it has custom uh, labels. It is on A&M Records, uh, what, the year is 79, 80, 80, 1980. And, um, if you can tell, on the back right here, it has, uh, this kind of holographic etched vinyl, and I don't know if you can see that in this lighting, but it's very cool, and I've always wanted this, never been able to find it cheap enough to pick it up, and this was just a dollar, uh, at a flea market I picked it up at, and this had to have been a month ago, probably, uh, this is probably the the uh, oldest find in this whole uh, stack right here. Most of the stuff is pretty recent. So uh, yeah, uh, good album. Um, of course, uh, too much time on my hands. Uh, good album. Check it out. Dennis DeYoung, man. He's one of the great vocalists in rock music. Um, I do have a few, uh, albums that, uh, I have upgrades to, um, let's 
stay off you though. Anyway, I had a copy of uh, the Allman Brothers Band's first album, and this is basically exactly like the first pressing. Same gatefold, uh, the cover's just a bit thinner, and uh, this was released on Capricorn, and now on uh, ACO. But uh, while I was in Daytona, I stopped at a record shop and I saw this for $2. And it's in decent shape, uh, probably uh, excellent condition, I'd, uh, I'd say. Uh, just a great blues rock album, this is way before they got into the super country rock uh, stuff. Uh, still early and into that uh, kind of uh, heavy blues rock. So, uh, you know, you got uh, your uh, the whipping clothes. Yeah, just uh, check it out. Let me get an album. On uh, Acro, like I said, uh, this is what the uh, label looks like. Label. Here's the other side. Definitely, if you're not familiar with that album, check it out. I recommend it. Up next, I'm going to go through another album that I already had a copy of. Um, this is just kind of, an, instead of, uh, this is a reissue of, uh, James Gang, uh, your album, I already had this, uh, this is the one that I had, actually, um, but, uh, I picked up a really nice, a really nice original pressing on, uh, Bluesway, ABC, and these are getting super hard to find, so I was really happy to find this for, uh, under five dollars. Um, Joe, of course, Joe Walsh, a very young Joe Walsh, and uh, this is just a, a nice album. It's not perfect. It's not their uh, their second album is much better, but uh, this does have uh, has songs like "A Lost Woman" and uh, "Stop." Yeah, so. Uh, So yeah, uh, not easy to uh, come by on the Blues Vibe, uh, Blues Way label. Um, really cool. Um, I thought I'd go ahead and show this to, uh, here's another album I already had, of course. Uh, Led Zeppelin 3, this is a UK pressing. And the will does not work, but it's there, the, it's intact. Well, it's not intact, but it's, you can pull it out like that. And I've never actually seen it like that, and it's actually quite nice, honestly. It's, it's very cool, and, uh, you know, standard game full. This is a late 70s, a later 70s pressing, uh, a UK pressing. Very uh, cool album right here. Um, of course, everybody knows this album. No introduction needed. But uh, that was definitely a cool find. My first uh, UK uh, Led Zeppelin album. All right, up next we have uh, an album I never had before. I previously never had, uh, but I have heard of it. One Live Badger by the band Badger. This is their first album, and unusually, it is a live album. Um, and if you can tell, this is a uh, Roger Dean cover. Looks very similar to uh, something Yes would put out, which is quite unusual because it actually features uh, past members of Yes. Um, uh, there you go, uh, Badger, One Live Badger. Uh, the first track is probably the best track on there, Will of Fortune. Check it out on YouTube, I'm sure it's on there. Um, there aren't any super long tracks. Uh, most of them are right around the 7 minute mark, which is uh, always good if you're, if you're not a big uh, 
long song guy, but um, this album is kind of uh, almost southern rockish flavored rock. Nothing uh, super heavy or anything, but I'd say the first track's probably the heaviest they get on the album. So uh, if you want to check out a track, that's a good one to check out. Some nice guitar work going on there. Um, up next, this is uh, kind of a different album, but it certainly is uh, a good album. And it's a band that I never, ever, ever see. Uh, the Buckingham's Time and Charges. Um, this is a mono pressing. It's the first pressing uh, on that uh, Two Y Columbia label, and it features uh, "Don't You Care," which is a great song, of course. Um, I just never see these records, so uh, it was really cool to pick up a Buckingham's album. Just kind of your standard uh, '60s pop, kind of uh, in the style of like a Beatles or you know, definitely Beatles uh, pop. Nothing real psychedelic or garagey. There's some garage touches, but uh, nothing uh, super deep. Uh, but this is a mono pressing, which is uh, actually pretty rare. It's probably about a fifteen or twenty dollar album. And I got it for you know right around two dollars. So that was a good find for um... Now this is an excellent find too. Um, this is an album that uh, LJ actually showed in one of his recent updates. I believe it's mo his most recent update. Um, uh, Jimi Hendrix acts as bold as well. Uh, this is his second album, I believe. Yeah, I think the last Hendrix Experience album was Electric Lady. Land. But uh, this is a good album. Definitely, it's okay. It's not his best. It's uh, it's very interesting and it's kind of kind of bizarre. But you, it's kind of one of those albums you have to get used to. But it's still a very good album in my opinion. Um, and I was I, I don't know why I haven't had it. I, I've just been uh, kind of uh, holding out for a first pressing. And I never see him, but uh, I actually picked up a first pressing on that uh, pink. Um, and a green uh, steamship reprise label. So uh, that was a really uh, good find for me. Never see a uh, Hendrix record very often, especially the first pressings. And it's kind of bar bizarre because uh, LJ found one too, so I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, there you are, uh, Jimmy Hendrix acts as bold as well. So uh, up next we have uh, an album that uh, I've been looking for. I, I see this uh, sometimes, and uh, I never actually listened to it. And I checked it out. And I was like, man, this is pretty good. So I grabbed it, and it's like a compilation of. Uh, Gary Wright and Spooky Tooth songs, and uh, of course, what Gary Wright uh, offered to Spooky Tooth. The album's called That Was Only Yesterday, and That Was Only Yesterday is the title. Uh, and of course, that's an, a song that was uh, famously covered by Foreigner. So, uh, very cool to uh, pick that up. And it's just your standard uh, AM. It has the uh, AM uh, sleeve, company sleeve. And, um, it also features uh, some Gary Wright solo work, like I said. Um, one group right here called uh, Gary Wright's Wonder Wheel is really cool. So, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy the Wonder Wheel track. Kind of uh, AOR ish. Very similar uh, in the style of. Like, like a foreigner, almost. Uh, definitely check this out. Uh, cool compilation of some Spooky Tooth and Gary Wright tracks, like I said. 
here's another uh, album I picked up, and this is definitely more in the psych vein. Uh, Country Joe and the Fish, uh, Electro Music for the Mind and Body. Um, this is an early uh, album by them on Vanguard, and uh, this was definitely a total blind buy for me. I never, I previously never heard this album, and I grabbed it, and I was like, eh, you know, it's a dollar, and uh, I picked it up, and I love it. It's really good. It's a really good album. Uh, I recommend you guys uh, pick this up if you're a psych fan, or a garage rock fan, or a garage psych fan. It definitely has those elements, some fuzz guitar tones going on. Um, definitely a great album. Of course, on Vanguard. Unfortunately, uh, it's uh, has someone's name written all over it on both sides. But uh, really cool album. Glad I picked that up. Glad I checked that out. Definitely worth uh, the little money I spent on it. And here's actually an album I picked up uh, on vacation. And I, if you're in the uh, Facebook vinyl community, you've probably seen this. Um, it's a copy of uh, Free's second album, uh, simply titled uh, Free. Uh, so it's their. Uh, it's a very cool album. Uh, definitely blues rock vibes going out of here, like the early stuff. Um, very. Good. Uh, I recommend uh, everyone check this out. Uh, and I picked this up at a Goodwill in uh, Daytona for a dollar. So, great deal. The cover's a little bit on the rougher side, maybe like uh, BG, but the vinyl was more uh, excellent almost. Uh, of course, it has the song uh, I'll Be Creeping. Uh, that's just one that I have heard before. Uh, song of Yesterday, of course, I've heard. Mouthful of Grass is a B side uh, to uh, All Right Now. But anyway, uh, just an awesome find for a dollar. I mean, uh, when I went on vacation, I was uh, very shocked when I saw that. Because I never see this album anywhere, uh, especially in the wild. Um, so anyway, uh, that's about it. Thanks everybody for uh, subscribing and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. But until next time, uh, see you guys later. Bye.